What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. Something about the underdog. I mean, today we have the only pro eater and pro bodybuilder on this show. I mean, what the hell is going on now? Hey. <laughs> Before we get into this interview, you guys know I have to give this man a proper underdog talk introduction. Today's guest is a man of many talents, an IFBB Pro bodybuilder, the CEO of T Fuel, the former Tennessee Titans Hyperion, a state trooper. Today's guest has appeared on Dwayne Johnson's Titan Game, and finally, a man who preaches wearing sunscreen before a Swole stroll, <laughs> the one and only Mr. Bartley Weaver. What is up, sir? How are you doing? Hey, thank you, Teddy. That was a heck of an intro there. I might have you write the write me a little biography one day or something. I'm sure we can make something yeah. happen like that. I, I love it. I <laughs> well, love you it. did you did your research too, so uh, I'm appreciating that and all the sports member but you got in the background. Who we got back there? Oh, that's our guy, Tim Boyle. He was on the show. Oh, that's okay. my guy, Panic Birdman. He was on another show. And then, obviously, all these guys have been on, uh, except Chris Geffen, who's coming on Friday. So, that's a, that's a big awesome. Um, But uh, I've got to ask, and, and I might sound stupid, what is a swole girl? Is this something you made <laughs> up? I, I, lo- I freaking love it, man. Yeah, I might need to copyright that, huh? I was going to see if it's not talking about it. I have to jump in my computer real quick, Bartley. I don't know, man. Uh, man, more than anything, I just try to uh, I try to keep content coming fresh. Sometimes I just happen to be doing an hour of cardio a day, and I'm like, hey, might as well utilize this. Let's do a little multitasking and hop on there. Sometimes, you know, I get a, a sentence or two that kind of comes to mind, and I'll work it in at some point. But most of the times, I'm just like, all right, let's see if I can talk for 10 to 15 minutes straight without stuttering too much <laughs> you know? to try it. to motivate people in the process, you know? So it's, it's been pretty cool uh, interacting with some of the fans and followers over the years that actually listen to that. You know, sometimes I see lower amount of views on the videos and sometimes I wonder, cause I'm like, I've had a lot of people tell me that they, they watch that. So you know, it's cool. If it helps one person, then that's good enough. Hey, and I mean, you better copyright that phrase soon. I know it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty damn catchy. Now, not bad. not bad at all. Now, Bartley, I mean, you are a man of many talents, and I, I want to explore each of them in, you know, in a little bit of depth. So first, are you, are you a Tennessee Titans fan, man? Well, I got it tattooed on my leg, so... I'm pretty much a Titans fan for life. Uh, basically, they made me a custom helmet when I was the the mascot for them. So I was like, nobody's head's been big enough to have a customized helmet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that tattooed on my leg. So, all right. So, 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 so Titans fan for life. Yeah. Okay. Titans that answers the question. Now I- I've got to ask Bartley, how did you become the high period? Like, what was the process of that? Because that's pretty fucking cool, man. Made. Just like uh, many other fortunate opportunities I've been able to experience, it's an audition process, and you can't get it unless you try out. You know what I'm saying? I uh, just so happened to be a couple weeks out from a bodybuilding show. I was shredded. I was like, well, I know one thing that I have in my control is my appearance. I'm dialed in. Let's go in here and uh, see if we can make some noise. And uh, <laughs> that's what we did. I, I made a pretty loud gesture there during the audition uh, practice. And it, it had them all, had them all freaked out. You know, they were surprised and a little scared at the same time. <laughs> you know, I would be too, if a giant man was coming to audition for this, this role. So, I mean, I, I, I love it. I mean, who, who's your favorite Titans player? Current. Uh, let's see. It's, it's hard not to like the King. Derrick Henry. I mean, once you see that machine run in real life, you you have all new appreciation for it. Yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry is is. 
I, I want to say he's the best running back in the NFL. I might get yeah. fault with a little bit, but I mean, stature wise yeah. and statistics, that dude is that dude is scary. That dude hey. is scary. What's something that was funny is like my very first day when they were doing like my Hyperion photo shoot, it was just after Derek got done with some type of ESPN news interview or something like that. So I was going in as he was leaving. Okay. He forgot to get his keys. So he comes back in about 20 minutes later. I'm sweating. I'm flexing with a sword and everything else. And he walks in, he's like, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I was like, hey, you're good, brother. You're good. You're going to see me like this all year. And, I mean, what what if they're like, hey, Bartley, I mean, to be part of this role, you're going to have to uh, – you're going to have to do some drills with Derrick Henry. W- would that deter <laughs> you or <laughs> – If I keep – I'll tell you what, if I could get practice squad pay, I, I'd give it a shot until okay. I got hurt. All right, that is fair. <laughs> I mean, practice squad pay is pretty damn good. I, <laughs> And I would take it. Uh, I wouldn't go near Derek Henry. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Uh, now, Bartley, also, you're a state trooper. Um, I mean, how were you always, you know, was that your job growing up that you wanted to be like, you know, so many people want to be a police, uh, like me included. Yeah. Was that your job that you wanted to be when you grew up? Uh, well, to update you a little on that, this is a, this is a fresh update. I resigned about three months ago, but wow. that was for other entrepreneurial um, opportunities. You know, uh, behind me is one of them. My coaching's one of them, and also vice president of a telehealth hormone clinic. Okay. So, I've got a lot of sticks in the fire, and uh, you know, and I, ha- I had that one in for seven years. I've got ten years of law enforcement experience, so. It was kind of hard walking away from the retirement and the security net. Uh, but I knew, you know, if I wanted to to help more people, I thought that this was the way I needed to go. And it enables me eight extra hours a day to get creative, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, thank you for your service. Yeah. I mean, being a, you know, state trooper, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a stressful job. And, I mean. Oh, yeah juggling it with all your other roles Barley. i mean mm-hmm. that that's gotta be that's gotta be yeah. something um well, well it's definitely a stressful yeah. gig you know i try not to take anything home with me so that was my mantra over the years just get home safe i've got so much other stuff to do <laughs> that i didn't have time to bring it home with me honestly but you know it, there was you know a bit of relief there after you know turning the badge in but you know it was bittersweet you know i i think that everything that i did uh, law enforcement wise kind of set me up to be who i am today and how i operate on a daily basis so i'm uh grateful and always fortunate and always support the blue all right and i mean one other thing that made you and one of the biggest things you know in your career is you are part of Dwayne the Rock freaking Johnson's Titan game. And I mean, you actually set the record for one of the longest events in the Titan arena, which I mean, I've seen some of these guys and if you're setting records, that's just damn impressive. And uh, I think the first time I saw you, Bartley, was on the Lunar Impact. And I don't know if you guys know what the Lunar Impact is. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like a, a moving wall and two Big ass motherfuckers are trying to stop the wall. And now Bartley and this other guy, firefighter, Bartley comes up late. So this wall is just moving towards Bartley and it just hits Bartley. I, I Bartley, I'm not going to lie. I thought you <laughs> thought were I was toast. toast huh? I, I thought you were toast, brother. And I mean, somehow you were right on that ledge and you just start pushing, pushing. And next thing I know, Dwayne's talking about lactic acid. And you're, you're almost pushing the guy off the edge. And eventually you do. And I'm like, this dude's a fucking beast. And I mean, I, I was that's when I was like, all right, this dude's the real deal. So, Bartley, what was that experience like? And then how did that help you grow? How did it help me grow? I'll go ahead and knock that one out of the park. You know, I felt I felt like I've never felt before. And I didn't know that the human body could withstand that much punishment, beat down, lactic acid buildup. And it really just reinforced, 
to me, you know, that where your mind goes, the body will follow, you know, and I was coming off three weeks after a hamstring tear and a hamstring pull. So I tore my left one and I pulled my right one on the 40 yard dash at the Titan games combine. So I was like, man, this is not good. Like all my other stuff was good. And then I did that and I was like, man, well, I've got a, I think it was 20 days I had to get ready for the show. And I'm talking about swelled up, bruised, black and blue, hammy. And I was like, man, I'm not going to test it until game day. So let's do what we can. And, of course, I ate like a horse. I was like, well, maybe I'm not going to be – I'm not going to be as shredded now because I can't do as much cardio, but I might as well just swell up and try to be close to the size of the rock. <laughs> was my strategy, you know, extra calories, you know, it's supposed to help you heal. So I like to eat. So that's what we did. But the lunar impact, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. And I've told people since that happened, it'll probably be the hardest thing I ever do uh, until you're put in a life or death situation. Cause that's how I treated it. You know, my, my family and my friends were there. They drove, you know, five, six hours to make it there. So the first two events uh, were in the first day. I lost the first one just because I, I I took a big risk and tried to pull down the wall early. I was like, hey, look, I'm my hamstring might not hold up. So yeah. let's go ahead and take a risk off the bat. And if it, if it sets me up one to nothing, it does. If not, then – we'll kind of know where my hamstring status is at and we'll go all out second time. So the first event, I didn't really feel anything, you know, a lot of adrenaline running, of course. Uh, and then the second one was later that night. And uh, I just remember looking at my family and looking at the rock. I was like, I ain't, I ain't going home, man. I, I am not doing it. And this is, Lunar impact is a dumb football player drill where you just push something and you try to outwill and outpower somebody that, you know, it took the thinking out of it. So I was like, all right, we've got one go and that's to push him off the edge. And Matt Chan, he ended up winning the whole competition. You know, he's a stud used to be number two in the world and CrossFit and, uh, he definitely climbed that ladder way faster than I did. So I got up there as fast as, 270 could get up there and uh just kind of planted my foot and that's what the rock told me afterwards he's like you better be you better be glad your big ass is 270 or you wouldn't have pulled that off <laughs> i was like hey i'll take what i can get you know what i'm saying but it yeah. it took about 23 minutes total and you're talking about you know everything both of us were just begging each other like to rest you know we could feel one kind of resting for a second, but then that's when you got to mentally just fight past it. I've got to get that inch. I've got to get one inch at a time because this was a, a 23 minute battle, you know. And I mean, in the YouTube clips, it's only a four four minute fifty minute battle. <laughs> I and I mean, I know it. And I, my favorite part of that is when you're backing him up and you just mm -hmm. start going like this. I'm like, <laughs> holy <laughs> shit, this dude's a bad motherfucker. And I mean. That and then then eventually the rest is history. But the mental the mental battle too. I mean, yeah. I I I don't think there's much more tough situations that you can be in that, like you said, are not life or death situations. I mean, you are put in a situation that is mimicking a life or death situation. All yeah. So yeah, and also reinforcing that life or death situation yeah. is I got to stay for another five days and eat all you can eat food every meal so i was like man i'm not gonna let my parents down i'm not gonna let the rock down and i need that food <laughs> that food i mean there's three good reasons right there and i mean bartley yeah. you did it you didn't get eliminated on that challenge and i mean you shocked a lot of people and you impressed a lot of people and just showed who you really are now i want to speak about when you were and are shredded in terms of you earned the professional bodybuilder title of IFBB Pro, winning the MPC Junior Nationals com competition. Congratulations, brother. And I mean, you worked for 12 years to become an IFBB Pro. Um, so I've got to ask, what was the work that went into this process? And then 
that feeling of finally being a pro. Yeah, man, that was uh, a very special moment. Once again, you know, I've had a bunch of those and I'm grateful for all the opportunities, but, you know, I'm also proud of myself for, for putting in the work and not giving up. I mean, it's easy to give up when you've, you know, been competing for 12 years and you haven't turned pro yet. You know, you know, I've, I've, I've coached a guy that turned pro with, you know, within two years, within a year and a half, you know, and then, you know, me still back there grinding, you know, I, I didn't necessarily knew if I had the potential genetically to make it to the pro league, but I was new for one thing. I love training and I love eating. And, uh, I was like, well, I've, I've put on the size. So, and I was at the top of my weight cap for like the past three years, you know? So I'm like, all right, I feel like this is it. And, uh, let's give it one more shot. I came off of missing my pro card by one point, like two or three shows in a row, you know, getting all those seconds and, and having to come back definitely lit a fire under my ass. So it was, it was, it was a sweet moment, you know what I'm saying? Because it's something that I wasn't sure I could do. It was something I've been grinding at for over a decade. So now anything past that is just like extra bonus points. You know what I mean? So every show I go to, I'm just so grateful to be there and meet people and network and, you know, and still make the improvements especially with that extra 10 pounds the the pro league allows you to have. So that was definitely crucial for, for me to keep progressing. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, speaking of extra weight, you <laughs> are also a competitive eater. And I mean, I, I've got to ask, do, do you think you could take Joey Chestnut? Well, in six days, we will find out. I saw. I yeah, saw. yeah. I big big that. news. I got the I got the fresh tea on the buns for Bart. Ooh, I tea. saw that. And uh so that news, well the world rankings just came out yesterday. They came out they they come out once a year. So right before Coney Island, July fourth, Nathan Hot Dog Showdown, they always refresh the rankings. So um, you know, I've I've been grinding on the competitive eating scene probably as hard as the bodybuilding i mean you don't you don't see it you know eating's of course a lot more fun than dieting but there still is some training involved uh that i had to incorporate just to try to move up the ranks and uh i did uh three pro eating competitions last year i did the world bratwurst eating championship uh the world tamale eating championship in the world pumpkin pie eating championship. And, uh, I finished well in all those. And then this year the world donut hole eating championship. So, uh, placing in all of those, uh, kind of gave me some momentum going into the fourth. So, you know, I just hope Joey don't triple me, you know, he's, he'll probably double me, but as long as he don't triple, <laughs> Hey, he's a man. He is. And he's I stud. mean, he's pretty good. I mean, he can put down his glizzies. <laughs> now, <Yeah. laughs> I, I've got to ask, why competitive, you know, eating? Because I, I think, and quote me if I'm wrong, you are the first competitive bodybuilder and competitive eater. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw in your story that you filed for, what was that that you filed for today? Yeah, it was uh, Guinness World Record. And uh, I was telling some somebody about being the first, yeah, I was I was a pro eater before I was a pro bodybuilder, you know, Ooh, and wow. uh, so I signed that contract three years ago. So I've been a pro eater for three years, and I was like, all right, not many people can do that. And uh, I've been trying at this bodybuilding thing a long time, like a real long time, and I kind of understand what I need to do. I was like, it would be cool if I could say I'm the first ever. You know what I mean? It's it's super silly, but it's both ends, both extremes of the spectrum. You know, you got the shredded, peeled inside out, three percent body fat, and then you got the blown up blue whale that can swallow a house. You know, <laughs> so that's what we're working on right now. And you know, I just thought it was 
it's a it's a funny thing to put on a business card. Put it that way. Uh, I I love that analogy. I'm not gonna lie, Bartley. I think yeah. that's so. I think that was funny as well. Now, finally, I think the big thing, and I, I mean the big thing, literally being behind you, T Fuel. You know what is that like being a CEO of T Fuel? How, how has this changed your perspective, and how has it allowed you to kind of see a new side of the fitness industry? Well, like I said, it's uh, it's just another opportunity I have to to help others. And yeah. uh, you know, one of my products is Fiber Greens. You know, I, I know a lot of people. You know, one of the reasons I uh, developed that product. Uh, my nephew has Crohn's, I mean, uh, not Crohn's, uh, Kleefstra disease. Okay. And, and they have, uh, there's a lot of digestibility issues with people with that disease. And I was like, all right, so I've been taking this one fiber for a long time. I think I can tweak it. I think I can add some, some probiotics, some, some greens, some reds, uh, some healthy stuff in there and, and it be just a, a top of the line health product. And, uh, so he was part of my motivation to get that. That way I could get him some to try out. Um, also myself, I've, I've been a huge fiber advocate for many years now. And many, many of my clients will attest to all my fiber and digestibility related questions on check-in days and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanted to come out with something that I firmly believe in. I only have two products right now. They're jammed full of stuff. You know, the the pre EAA is a full pre workout formula, EAAs, and then it's got the hydration complex in there. Mm. And then, you know, we already spoke on the fiber green. So I was like, these are two staple products that I'm comfortable using the rest of my life. You know, I could have made anything, yeah. you know, and, uh, but I was like, those are solid. And I think some other people could benefit from having, you know, a very, very affordable product for what's in it, you know, and that was my main thing, especially as a, as a pro bodybuilder. Now, you know, uh, I hang my hat on, you know, credibility and, and putting forth quality products. So, you know, that the whole T fuel ordeal kind of spawned from, me backstage i just got done talking to the rock and it's basically like we're sitting here talking like bros and we're talking about all this and i'm like man i'm so inspired and i'm like man what can i do to take this to the next level and you know and and t fuel was just a thought at the time you know but i was like all right so we've been the titan for the tennessee titans and we've been on the titan games so let's come out with titan fuel so bam and uh after you know we were off to a killer start and then uh rain and monster came in and tried to uh, dispute me over my logo which i had trademarked first but they advertised first so <laughs> it it wasn't that close but it was one of those games that i wasn't trying to play i wasn't trying to play big money you know uh big pockets there so so I came out with this. I, I like this logo better than my last and, uh, you know, just completed the rebranding and now we're fully functioning and uh, I'm going to be putting a lot of time into T fuel coming up with, uh, formulating some new products and, uh, and, and getting these out in local stores. So if anybody's watching, drop a comment down below and help my boy Teddy out on the algorithm and, uh, let us know where you want to see T fuel because, Hey, it's just only a phone call away. And I mean, speaking of saving for the algorithm is important. I mean, Bartley, I am going, if someone buys T Fuel after watching this and sends me a DM, uh -oh. I will have a signed autograph. Uh, well, I'll send you a signed autograph from some, one of the guests that we've had on, on the show. So we'll make it worth it in some sense because. Let's go. Honestly, I love the formula in it. I think it's, I think you're getting, it's an all in one and I love seeing an all in one. Right. I think it's so much better than buying, you know, three products just to get the same yeah. thing. So, I mean, I love, I love it. I'm, I'm excited to see where T Fuel goes. Uh, I think it's a great brand. 
um, you know, excuse my French, fuck you, uh, monster, fuck you, rain. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, uh, but hey, I've, I, I've said that a few times. It's all right. right. Well, <laughs> I shared that thought, but I mean, I'm talking with a man of all trades. I mean, really, I don't think there's a trait I didn't, you know, leave out. Um, and, and I mean, you really are a busy guy, Bartley, but before we end this interview, I like to get my guests out of here with some rapid fire questions. Are you down? Let's do it, brother. Favorite Titans QB of all time. Uh, McNair. Ooh. Okay. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to shock the world a little I think Tannehill is actually pretty good. I was going to say Mariota. I think Mariota was a little underrated there, and I think I think he's not going to be bad. But um, yeah, McNair is McNair is. I mean, hey. yeah, Air, Air McNair. The 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 building was on fire back then. Yeah, I mean that dude. That is. That I, is I agree. Tannehill's a stud, though. I agree. I think he's underrated. and I think he's going. Yeah. To, I, think, I mean, this is his year. It's a it's a major right. year for him. Um, but we'll see. Favorite food to eat competitively, Bartley? Okay. One that I've eaten competitively or one that I would like to eat competitively? Both. Okay. Pizza is my all-time favorite. I love pizza. You know, I've uh, eaten it solo competitively, you know, not <laughs> against people. You know, I've done, I've done seven-pound pizza in Louisville, Kentucky. I've done... You know, the big 28-inch Benny challenge after uh, my pro show in Norfolk. And uh, I've done a bunch of different pizza stuff. I've, there was another Mega Monday challenge. It was like seven and a half pounds of, of pizza. I, I, I love pizza, man. I've, I've done a ton of them. But uh, my favorite one that I've done was probably pumpkin pie. Because I love pumpkin wow. pie, man. Damn. <laughs> Smart mind, think alike. I mean, basically, we're the same. Yeah. Basically, I'm an IFB pro. I mean, yeah. pumpkin pie, I, I mean, I don't know. Pumpkin pie and apple pie yeah. are out there, but pumpkin pie takes the yeah. So I, I love that. So, so I did, uh, I did nine, I think nine and a quarter pounds in eight minutes is what I did. And that was 37 slices of pumpkin pie. And <laughs> it, it was fun, man, because, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you got to, you got to chew, you know what I mean? You still got the crust, but I mean, you don't have to worry about too much. It's just, it's just the old poo bear shovel. Just keep it going. You know what I'm saying? You got you to dig yeah. deep for some of these things. Yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. I, I so, honestly don't know if I could, I feel like I would lose my love for pumpkin pie if I did that. So I probably, I don't know. Hey, guess what? I ate it the next day, man. Ooh, all right. I, I ate it the next the next day. I was like, man, that was to be honest with you, it was the best pumpkin pie I've ever had in my life. So that makes it better. All right. That does you know what I'm saying? I, like it I, had a little cinnamon oh, touch to it, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, just God. just the perfect amount. It was a it was a sunny day in Jeffersonville, Ohio. So the sun was was warming nice. it up, you know. Nice. Hey, I, in my in my practice run out here on my balcony. You know, I did some pumpkin pie and I got them from Kroger and they were still frozen in the middle, dude. But I was like, I was like four minutes in. I was like, man, I'm just going to have to tough it out. I just ate, you know, two pumpkin pies. You know, I'm not going to stop now. <laughs> you, Bartley, you're a bad motherfucker. Like, my guy is out here eating frozen pies to be the best. I mean, I, wow. No, man. Wow. Hey, Last hey. three questions are are pretty big ones. Hey, Less sorry I'm over here on my phone. I'm trying to uh, set up a discount code, a Ooh. underdog discount code for anybody that's wanting to buy it. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on it when we get done here, but okay. anybody that's listening uh, Run here it, after we bro. hang up, we're going to we're gonna double team it, brother. Hey, we, hey, we're a small podcast, but we got the connections. We are going to run that up. Trust me on that. Now, yeah. talk like Rocky for the rest of your life, or have to box Rocky Balboa in his prime. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You know, it depends on what mood I'm in. Do I feel like being 
hilarious and loud the rest of my life with a nice little Philly accent or do I want to, I don't know, knowing me, the competitor that I am, I want to, I want to box with him. Cause what, what happens if you get whooped by Rocky? I mean, you get shoot, they, they might come out with Rocky seven, you know, <laughs> And, and honestly, I think – I mean, you're a pretty big dude. I think you, I think you would have a pretty damn good chance. So I, I think you should bet on yourself in that one, Harley. I mean, it, I, I, I would put some money on you. I would put more money on Sylvester, but I would put money on you too. Don't worry. Hey, I'll, I'll take a few rib shots, you know. I got enough – I've had enough hot dog practice here the past couple of weeks. I think I could I pad the ribs a little bit. <laughs> Well, last question is a, is is going to be a big one. Wrestle Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, or have to eat your least favorite food in a competition. Hey, definitely, definitely in the in the ring with DJ. You know, because yeah, we match up about the same weight. You know, uh, he told me he was about my weight um, when I did the Titan game. So, he's got a few inches on me. So, uh, I think it would – hey, I even told him one time. I was like, hey, brother, hey, if you want to rock bottom me through a table in Jumanji 5, I mean, just uh, <laughs> just give your boy a call. You know, I'd, I think it would be hilarious. You know – I'd probably do it from the Wee Man. I'd let him do that. I wouldn't let Dwayne Johnson do that. But I'd let Wee Man, I'd let him do it to me. I I, I don't know if I could take Dwayne Johnson, you know, rock bottom. I, I don't think I'd be – I'd probably hey, be at the rock bottom at that point. Shit. Hey, hey, Teddy, I think I just like too much pain. I think that's the constant yeah, thing. I mean, you know, I like, I, I like dieting and being low body fat, being in pain, and I like, you know, eating 10 pounds of food. You know, in ten minutes, and you know, you know, I was saying know, badass partly. Maybe you know, you might just be, you know, you might just be fucking crazy, my guy. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm deciding which one, but hey, I'm sure there's a touch in there. I think there's a, a middle. There I think there's a middle ground. Yeah. I mean, partly, it has been an honor and privilege having you on the Underdog Talk. Now, before we go, the floor is yours. Where can we find T Fuel? Where can we find your highlights. Where where can we find you know the link to this uh, eating competition on July fourth? The floor is yours. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad you asked because it's it's going to be prime time, baby. It's going to be on ESPN News and ESPN Two Live. Uh, so you'll have to check your uh, your cable provider and, and see what time they have it. I think it's like eleven or twelve is when they're starting festivities and then they're doing a replay on ESPN at like three o'clock, three or four o'clock. So, so definitely that was one of my main things, man, watching this all these years, I was like, man, I love to eat. And I just think it'd be badass to have an intro on ESPN. I'm, I'm trying to think what my dance is going to be. If, if they, Hey, do you think I should come out like Ray Lewis or what, or something different? That would be, Man, that would be pretty damn cool. <laughs> that that would be. I mean, what's yeah. Dwayne Johnson? How does Dwayne Johnson come out? I know he, he danced somewhat. I mean, yeah. I, that would be yeah. pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, where can we find T Fuel right now? Tfuelsups.com. Tfuelsups.com. The Instagram page is just T Fuel. Uh, Whoever owned tfuel.com wants five grand for me to come off the domain. So I'm like, nah, we'll just do T Fuel subs. <laughs> but the Instagram page is T Fuel. And uh, my Instagram, my personal Instagram is Dreamweaver IV. I'm the fourth, Early Weaver the fourth. And uh, yeah, also. Anybody that's interested in online coaching, I'm pretty much doing that and my supplements full time now. So, dreamweaverfit.com. I do uh, online coaching, in person personal training if somebody's near to the area. And, uh, but we can customize everything and do it all online for the most part. That's what I do. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Teddy. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. I appreciate the charisma. I needed that. 
I need to, I need to get fired up, baby. And, and hey, underdog talk. I mean, guys, if I start a GoFundMe to raise five thousand dollars, you guys know the deal. Let's make this new chief fuel come out. Get that five thousand. But Bartley, it has been Let's go. An honor and privilege. Best of luck in this eating competition. Put Joey Chestnut to shame. You have so much big <laughs> coming for you, and you've done so much big things. I think you truly are. I'm going to say it, and a lot of people who have been on the show might get mad. I think you have done the most in your life. You are the guest who has done the most in their life on this show, and I mean that's incredible. Wow. Because each time you've succeeded, and each time a new challenge has come to you, and you've done it in a greater leap. So I appreciate that, brother. Hey, we're we're just getting into acting too. I just uh, filmed for a TV show last week in New York. So, oh, so hey, listen, that's hey, I'm trying to take it up a notch, baby. What hey, about, uh, I, am I going to hey, see you on WWE soon? I don't know. I, I've been thinking about that too. Uh, it's down there in Florida. I was thinking about going checking out Florida here later this summer, maybe stopping by the the headquarters, the training headquarters down there. <laughs> yeah, make that – hey. Make I, I love that. wrestling, man. It, it's been something I've always thought would be awesome as well. You know, I'm just trying to – I'm just trying to consider if these uh, 33-year-old joints can hold up or not. You know, it's – for the most part, it's a young man's game, but, shoot, it'd be fun to get up there and cut a promo. <laughs> I think you'd be pretty damn good at it. Now, I mean, all that talk of food has has made me hungry as hell. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> it's been an honor. Go check out Bartley's content. Go check out T-Fuel in July 4th. Tune in. Support our guy, Underdog yes, Talk. Sir. Do your thing. But until next time, guys, Underdog out. Appreciate it.